Hey everyone, Nick Apicella from Resonic Sound Solutions here with another competitor spotlight. This time on Mr. Steve Head. Steve, yes, what are sir. you doing here? What do you got? You know, tell well, us more about what you're doing. I was traveling down uh, the interstate and there was a sign that said car audio competition. So I figured I'd come here, check it out, see what's going on. Oh yeah. And uh, it just so happens that you know, I got a pretty decent sounding car, so I figured I'd bring it in, and I'm like, oh, okay, maybe I can start competition. <laughs> so I just threw my hat in the ring and and paid the entry fee, and here I am. Here you are, World Finals. Yeah. So yeah. tell me more, what, what kind of car is this? So this is a 1990 Chevy Blazer, uh, S10 Blazer. Okay. Um, you know, uh, the reason I chose this vehicle and the reason I like this vehicle is this body style was very uh, was was very epic to us back in the heyday of sound cue. Yeah. Uh, in the '90s, you know, you had guys like Mark Facuda, Virgil Williams, um, Ralph Benedetti. Those guys all ran the S10 body style, and uh, those were the cars that we idolized when we first got into this. And okay. um, and I think you just mentioned Mark Fukuda, right? Isn't yeah. this car kind of themed after yeah, it's, one it's, of his builds? Yeah, it's uh, kind of paying homage to the, to the greats, you know. Um, uh, like I said, he was always an idol of mine. You know, who else is, is sounding like that and able to hit a 150, you know, 158, 156, you know, world champion multiple years in a row. And uh, yeah, I wrapped cool. it yellow to, to pay homage to him. Cool. So tell me more about what you got going on back here, because this looks pretty wild. So basically what we got in there is, we'll start at the top. So that's a uh, six channel tube preamp is that what uh, this made is by Audio here? Solution. Yep, right up wow. top here. So it's a so, full tube preamplifier? Yes, it is. Class cool. A tube um, and, uh, preamp. So the RCA signals for the highs, mids, and mid bass come into and out of that device, and it's a way for me to add a little tube flavor to the sonic uh, performance in the preamp stage. Okay. From there, the signal goes to a pair of Class A Audio Solutions CA, um, the Excel CAs, and they're running the These sweeters and mid-range. Right? Yep, the audio waves. Okay. And then and the, on the lower level, we've got a trio of bridged Celestra VA 210s. Okay. Uh, so we've got left mid bass, right mid bass, and this one is common on the subs cool. uh, in series. And what subs you got back there? So I see them right over there. IDW 15s. Those are the, those are the IDWs. IDWs. Now, can't be period correct in a 1990 Blazer if you don't have trunk liner and tweed, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> so the install is trunk liner and tweed, but it also serves another purpose that it's not a hard reflective surface. So this is all by design with soft upholstery to help minimize reflections. Yeah, and I see you even have foam back here. You have yes. your absorption pillows for back here, for yes, I guess sir. for standing wave purposes, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Cool. And then if we come around to the front. Yeah, why don't you go on the passenger side? I'll hit in the, I'll sit in the driver. Sounds good. Cool, all right. All right, wow. so in the front, basically it's uh, a three-way tower on each side of the dash. Oh, yeah. So you've got behind the grills here, you've got the tweeter, the mid-range, and the mid-base. Mid-base is in the kick panel area. And it's basically a two-channel stereo, um, minimalist audiophile you know, presentation. I'm not running rear fill, not running center channels doing everything with uh, with real two-channel audio. And uh, you call this minimalist? Yeah, this, this is minimalist. <laughs> Everything was moved to the center. AC yeah. still works. Um, wow. You know, Plexi also is period correct for the 90s. You know, yeah. tweed is a nice soft surface, less reflective than vinyl. Yeah. Um, rounded, low profile, you know, shapes in here. Um, but, you know, even the door panels, I didn't want to do big build outs on the door panels. Luckily, the S10s have nice flat doors. Yeah. So I was able to keep the profile down. So they're just, uh, there's nothing special about those doors. Cool. But, uh, so what do you got going on here? Source is the uh, Estelle and Kern Con Max, and it's shooting coax digital into the Zapco processor. 
And I had my friends down at uh, Bearded Brothers in, in uh, Georgia. Okay. 3D print me a nice uh, holder for my... Yeah, this looks really cool. ...for my uh, digital audio player as well as the controller for the, for the Zapco processor here. Yeah, that's nice. You know, and you have nice, uh, easy reach and control of everything just sitting right here. Yeah, we got the Bluetooth controller for the Estelle so we can do track and volume and play, pause and all that stuff from right there. Nice, solid little mount there. Um, what else can I tell you about this? Oh, cool. Seating position is everything. So the seats are moved back. They're moved in. We're maximizing path length. As you can see, you oh, can't yeah. hardly even touch the pedals. I can't reach the and, pedals. <laughs> well, I can, but uh, the pedals have been extended. You can see that they're actually much farther out than they were from the factory. Oh, yeah, they are. And I dropped the steering column down, got rid of all the clutter up there. So we really, everything about sound. Yeah, cool. Maximizing the sound from the front of this thing. Wow. So let it, me ask you. Uh, let me ask you a couple questions about okay. this. Um, question one: In the past year, what was the biggest change you made that affected its performance? Like, what was your aha moment or aha piece of equipment or something of that sort? So it was a combination of going high resolution. Okay. Because this is the first year that I stepped away from spinning CDs. Mm -hmm. So being able to use the high resolution player through the Zapco uh, and going with the Audio Wave CAs and utilizing that tube preamp for the first time, that was, it, it's like a whole different dimension yeah. uh, that, than what I was operating with, you know, even as late as finals last year. Yeah. So. Yeah, coming out right out of the gate, did really well at Aggieland. I won that money round, and um, you know I'm I'm routinely at the top of the of the pack in terms of. And even in bef the before money that, you were always at the top of the pack, which actually brings me to my second question. It's kind of the same thing, but I haven't asked anyone this yet. But okay. considering this blazer has been around as long as you know you've had it, yes. Um, same question, but over the course of the entire thing, what was the, what is the biggest thing you've learned about making a great audio system over the course of having this car? Uh, what is the biggest thing? That's a that's a loaded question. That's a hard question. I it know. is a hard question. <laughs> it's, or maybe it's something it, that relates to this car. Like, what was your biggest moment that made a huge change in this car that really brought it to the next level? Yeah, it's uh, well. You know, I, I built this car from the start with the tuning being the priority and the tuning began in the design stages. Yeah. So I didn't just throw stuff where it fits and rely on DSP after the fact. Oh, yeah. I actually listened to it in real time while building it. And um, for example, two months time listening to the angles of the baffles that the mid-ranges and tweeters are on. Two months. So that's just maximizing and, and using the reflections of the glass and the cabin to my advantage, finding the right position that allowed the speaker to, to disappear, but also maximize and, and work those reflections to my advantage. Yeah. Um, and also something that continues even to this day is everybody in the room, everybody in this place, yep. everybody in SoundQ organization, we can all learn from each other. Yeah. And that learning continues even at this show. Yeah. I've learned a few things, a few more tricks that I'm going to put in my repertoire of tuning Care to share tactics. any of them? Uh, yes. Never, ever use horns. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I... I I can't get into that right now, but I, I mean, I mean, it, it's it has to do with phase relationships and uh, phase alignment, um, cool. uh, getting everything to operate as one driver. That's our goal. Yeah. Okay. If we can get everything coherent and point source, yeah, that's nine tenths of the battle. Yeah. Okay. Um, other than that, I uh, what else? What else can I tell you about this? All right. Um, one more question then. Yes. 
to anyone watching this video who might be interested in getting into car audio sound quality competition or even just coming out to one of these to check them out and, and even right. listen to a car such as this, what, what kind of advice do you have for them or what kind of you know, words of encouragement do you have for them? Um, well, it all base is, it's all centered on a love of music. Mm -hmm. If you don't love music, you probably shouldn't try your hand in car audio unless you're just, you know, you know, you're probably just trying to impress friends. But if you truly <laughs> like music, we should all want the best sonic performance we can in any of our systems, whether it be home or car. So just, I would tell them to keep at it. It's going to be a lot of trial and error and l take everything that anybody ever tells you advice wise and process it yourself and try it yourself. Don't just sit behind a keyboard at home and get into arguments on the internet with some jackass who doesn't know dick from apples, okay? <laughs> Do it yourself because nobody in this room is, is perfect. Nobody in this room is the expert. There's flaws in everybody's, you know, uh, tuning methods, techniques, and all of that. It's learning from your mistakes and staying dedicated. And the ultimate goal is the most musically accurate and realistic performance you can create in your car. Cool. All right. And it does it. not happen overnight. Trust me when I tell you that. It's been taking you what? How long? Yeah, a long time. Long time. <laughs> How long but has I've, this been uh, been out there? So this uh, debuted, I believe, in 2015. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're. So it's been going eight, eight years, years now. Eight yeah. years. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I know that I need to do some updates on it and whatnot, but like I said, it was purpose built from the start, and that purpose continues to give me a solid foundation to just do little finesses here and there yeah to keep trying to get it to the next level and um yeah and i heard it at steel valley and it looks like or it sounds like it's definitely all paying off yes it's sounding really good yeah and uh I appreciate that. anything else you want to say before we head out of here yeah i paid him to say that by the way oh okay no i'm just kidding what's going on uh, with your shirt there last thing my shirt it puts the lotion in the basket <laughs> My guys and I have a have a little um, little running joke that anytime we're going to do tweaks on our systems, we're going to uh, we're going to get some lotion out. <laughs> and if if we're not reaching for our lotion after listening to the thing, we know that it's just not doing it for us. So Say leave no leaving more. us with the proverbial uh, blue balls, if you know what I'm saying. I know what you're saying. Okay. Cool. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> All right, man. Have a good one and good luck this weekend. Thank you. Yep.